This episode of Storytellers is brought to you by these fine companies. I'm Mike Dunn, and you're watching Storytellers on Competition Plus TV. You know, my first ride, um, my first paid ride was with Bill Shisky in the Beartown Shaker in 1980. And Roland actually helped me get that, that ride because Rick Johnson was leaving. Um, he, he was, I don't know what he was doing. He, was, he went somewhere else. It wasn't, he didn't get fired or anything. But so the ride was going to be available. So Roland lobbied to get me in it. Bill Shisky says, all right, we'll, we'll put you in it. Roland wanted me to go in there and get some seat time. Um, because Colson was talking about retiring in a couple of years or whatever. So <clears throat> I went to Bill Shisky and, and he built this brand new trailer and he gave me a good car. It was a, it was a Jaime Sarte car back in uh, that Rick had driven. It was, a, it was a good car, but he didn't have a lot of parts. He had one aluminum motor, he had one steel block and he was buying, Bill was buying or, or we were buying our parts used from Tom Hoover, who was buying his parts used from Tom Perdome. So we we're going, we we're pretty far down the food chain. So we go out and I, I take all this. I went to Minneapolis, I got the truck and trailer, drove it back to, to LA myself. I was living with my grandmother at the time and worked on the car there. And I had some friends, we just, you know, we worked on it and just kind of updated it. You know, Bill gave me a little bit of money to put a new fuel system on it and update some clutch stuff, uh, you know, nothing big. And so we did all that. And I went to my first race, and it was the AHRA Winter Nationals, and it was in Tucson um, at the time in 1980. And it was actually the event that uh, Marvin Schwartz got killed. And, you know, so I'm, it was Sunday morning, and I'm standing in my pit area, and Snake comes over. And Snake's talking to me a little bit, and he says, So, kid, so are you nervous? And I said, Yeah, I'm nervous. He says, I like that. At least you're honest. He says, we all get nervous before race day. <laughs> he walked off and I went, well, you know, that, 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 was, that helped, you know, uh, hearing that from the snake. So I went out there and we didn't do much. We got beat first round, I guess. And so left Tucson and I went to the next race was in Green Valley, Texas. And uh, Rick Johnson was there at the time. So he was going to be my, you know, I picked up crew members as we went up to each event. Bill Schiff, he didn't go to a lot of events. He went to a lot of the ones local up by Minneapolis, but the ones that were farther away, he didn't. So we go to this track and I get in, it's, there's an ice storm as I'm driving into Dallas with the truck and trailer and I get off the off ramp and it's sliding and I, you know, I'm Southern California. I don't know what it's like to drive in snow and ice. So luckily I didn't crash the rig, uh, get it to Rick Johnson. He had a little uh, shop that, uh, actually a salvage yard and a shop that he was doing uh, strictly with Volkswagens. And he gave me a corner to work on the car, so I serviced it, and we were running Green Valley, Texas um, that weekend. That, I think it was a Sunday event. And it was 30 degrees. It was in the 30s when we, when we ran that event. So it was cold, you know. And so Rick comes up and he says, he says, well, he says, man, there's no traction out there. He said, what you're going to have to do is, you know, just go out there, just roll it off the starting line, just give it a little bit of throttle. If you feel it, spin the tires, just back off a little bit, and then get down there about half track, put in high gear and try to feed a little bit more throttle in it. So I go out there and I do that, and it goes out there and we win the race and it runs like a 7.30, you know? And that was low ET, because the track, nobody could get down the track. So, <clears throat> um, so the next run I said, oh, you know, I'm gonna be a hero here. I'm gonna, that, we can run quicker than that. So I go out there and I roll off starting line, and then I just, I nail it, sideways, out of the throttle, turn, sideways the other way. Uh, out of control, you know, won the round and Rick says, I never seen anybody get a car so sideways without crossing the center line or hitting a wall in my life. He said, that was scary. He said, don't do that again. I said, all right, you're right. So in the final round, we make it to the final and we're racing Larry Gould at the time. And uh, we ran a little bit, he ran like a 740 or something. I mean, it was just really hard to get the thing down the racetrack. So I went out there and, and I feathered the throttle and he, you know, he, was, he backed it off so much, it did what we call climb the ring gear, to where it, do, it doesn't have any power, so basically it doesn't squat the tire, it doesn't get the tire rotation, it just basically sits there and just drives the car up the ring gear. The, the rear tire's kind of stationary, and it just kind of goes up. So he stood it basically up on the bumper, and I just went out there and drove it like I did the first round, went 718 at 
220 miles an hour and, and won the race, you know, the second race. And everybody goes, my old man says, uh, she, you, you, won, you won your second race. How good did you run? I said, 718. He says, what? <laughs> so, so that was it. That was my second race. And uh, my whole goal, the funny thing is, you know, looking back at those years, and not looking back, I mean, at that time, when I looked at this thing, because Bill trusted me, you know, he, the driver was, I mean, I was basically tuning this thing, running, driving the truck and trailer, doing the whole thing. And I'm a 23-year-old kid, you know, not real sure of myself and thinking, okay, what do I need to do here? And I look at these parts and I said, okay, I got to try. My goal is to make it through the season without getting killed. <laughs> that, was, that was my whole focus the first year in, 19, in 1980. So I was very cautious about how we ran the race car. And, not, and I'll give you an example of what little bit I knew back in the day. We, um, we went to a divisional race up at Fremont because uh, we still had the car out west <clears throat> before it went out uh, east for the match race. So this was like in March of 1980. <clears throat> Excuse me, March of 1980, April, somewhere in there. And Fremont was a fast track. And Ed McCullough was driving the Super Shops car. And that was a, that was a bad hombre back then. And he was, you know, he was running you know, his 616 number one qualifier. And we went... 650, 650, 650 in qualifying, two or three runs, I can't remember. I think it's probably two runs in qualifying. So, you know, it was making changes. The first round it goes up there and it runs a, it runs like a, I don't know, 641 or something. And then we had McCullough in the semis. And uh, so it goes up there and, and, you know, I left on him. We didn't have reaction times, but A said I did. He said he saw me out there a little bit. And the thing's truck along pretty good and shifted in high gear and just for the lights kind of noses over just a little bit just flat no I didn't really nose over just kind of quit running and then poof, he went by and got the win and he went you know 622 and I went 627 and Ace was like holy hell you know he kind of underestimated us you know I said oh, yeah you know did step up so we we're all happy and everything was great so went and got the fuel pumps checked you know back then you had the fuel pumps weren't uh, were notorious for going away and sure enough the pump had gone away quite a bit. So we got it all fixed up and put it back on the car and went back right back to around 650s. And I wasn't smart enough to figure out, well, the reason it went 620 because the fuel pump went bad. It leaned the motor out and the thing stepped up and ran because it was way over, over jetted basically with too much fuel pump. But the one thing it did do, it, it was very good at, uh, on the match race circuit, we could 650 them to death. And unless Snake or you know, McCullough or, you know, McEwen or somebody, you know, our Beetle was, was, was at the race. We pretty much won them, you know, uh, because it would go down the racetrack. And, but I, I do remember one time, I'm going to finish this with, with the Beartown Shaker. Bill came to the event, the World Series of Drag Racing at Cordova in 1980. So <clears throat> we went out there and we went 650. And Bill's just like, I'm fed up with these 650s. It's my car. I don't care. So he put, a, he put a main jet in the high speed, high speed lean out jet, which was a big deal at the, at the time. So I go out there and it's the last run. And so I said, yeah, so I do this thousand foot burnout, you know, back up and, and uh, you know, we do the run, this thing's flying down there in about, you know, about 1200 feet, 1100 feet, just for the lights, boom, it backfires. And, backfires a supercharger and went six, it went like a 627 again, you know, which was, Tied the quickest run of, of the season. And, and uh, <laughs> the whole thing was it ran out of fuel because I did that long burnout, which he didn't tell me to do. I just, for whatever reason, I thought, I'm just going to do a long burnout. This is how ignorant we were back in the day, you know. And John Force, you know, we were all right there just trying to figure this thing out. And we, for the most part, we didn't really have a clue. But um, just the fact that, you know, okay, I got through the season. It was great. Ran one more race in Sioux Falls, South Dakota on Labor Day weekend. I caught a Greyhound bus from Sioux Falls down to Des Moines and Roland picked me up on the way back from Indy and went back home to the West Coast. And, and I drove his car at the end of uh, the season in 1980. And needless to say, it was kind of funny because my whole focus was to, you know, I was very careful in the Shifty car. But then when I got Roland's car, I made the assumption, well, everything's perfect. These are good parts. Nothing's going to happen to me. <laughs> we, we've seen the video. Just, you know check Mike Dunn crashes and you can see uh, how that turned out for me. <laughs>